The Earth's magnetic field is a first line of defense against cosmic rays. These high energy particles move through space at almost the speed of light and come from explosive events like supernova and active galactic nuclei. Cosmic rays are as menacing as they sound. They're ionizing, meaning they carry enough energy to detach electrons from molecules. For life, that's not good. Ionizing radiation damages living tissue and increases cancer rates. Scientists think a supernova 2.6 million years ago coincided with the extinction of a third of all aquatic animals, including the megalodon. With no magnetosphere, extinction events would probably be more common. And on planets without one, life couldn't exist there, right? Well, not quite. A new paper from scientists in Germany and the Jet Propulsion Lab suggests Venus, of all places, could theoretically host life in its clouds, despite not having a large protective magnetic field like we do. Though before you freak out, be sure to watch to the end of this video. We have a few suggestions for future research that would clarify these findings. We're a new channel covering studies like this. Subscribe to join us. The preprint was published this week and has quite a title. Revisiting the Cosmic Ray-Induced Venusian Radiation Dose in the Context of Habitability. Translated, the physicists were basically trying to figure out if cosmic rays sterilize Venus enough to eliminate the possibility of life in its clouds. Hold up. Clouds? Yeah, the idea of cloud-based life on the planet started gaining traction in the 1980s. Here, you can see temperatures on Venus only match those on Earth's surface in a slice of the planet's thick atmosphere. A habitable zone is most likely between an altitude of 50 and 60 kilometers. Now Venus's surface was livable for the first 750 million years, and liquid water was present for 2 billion years. Given what we know of our planet's history, this could have been long enough for life to have evolved. Several studies suggest as temperature increased and surface water evaporated, microorganisms could have migrated to Venusian clouds and may have adapted to the limited water that remained. The atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide, but does have water vapor levels of 20 parts per million. Interestingly, Soviet probes revealed cloud particles there have similar vertical motion to those seen on Earth. And due to the stability of the thick cloud layers, nutrient-rich airborne particles could exist for long periods of time. We have yet to find any evidence of cloud-based life, but it's theoretically possible. Though what about cosmic rays and even solar radiation? Wouldn't they irradiate the unprotected atmosphere anyway? That's what the latest paper tried to figure out. They simulated how radiation would move through Venus's clouds and how it would affect anything alive. To do this, they modeled three unique phantoms, mimickers of life. A CO2-based phantom similar to Venus's air, a sphere of water similar to a cell, and one like human tissue. Because of how charged particles move before reaching the habitable zone, the team's results show radiation dosage absorbed by all three phantoms is below levels seen at flight altitudes on Earth. And even in a worst-case scenario, cloud-based life would be exposed to 33.9 mg per hour at the top of the zone. That's less than what life on Earth was exposed to, 41.7 mg per hour, after a strong solar flare in 1956. Using the worst-known examples of recent space weather, life on Venus could still survive, according to the paper. But the word recent matters here. For one, we don't have a complete record of ionizing events to hit Earth. Scientists think some could have been stronger than what happened in 56. It's thought the sun may produce super flares every 3,000 years or so, two orders of magnitude stronger. Plus, it's not clear if supernova, like the one that hit Earth 2.6 million years ago, give out more radiation. The paper doesn't address this. It does tell us something very clear though, if there was life in Venus's clouds 60 years ago, it would have received 20% less radiation than life on the Earth's surface. If this mathematical relationship has held for the last few billion years, since Earth's organisms have survived, then logic suggests Venus's would have too. But more research is needed. We don't have actual data on how stronger cosmic rays or solar flares would have affected the planet's clouds in the past. And given the habitable zone has likely changed over time, we also don't have modeling data on how ionizing radiation might have affected organisms at different altitudes. Future research needs to drill down into these issues. So, what do you think? Should someone write a sci-fi novel off of this concept? Share this with someone who likes science but doesn't have time to read papers. We appreciate it.